As of 2023, Playboy Cardi, Uno the Activist, and Thousand Man Fani are in completely different places in their careers. The latter are semi-successful, while Cardi has risen to the top of mainstream rap. But at one point, these three all had the same level of popularity, and were even part of a group. Two of them were literally family, and as a trio, they formed the group Splur Gang, dropping a couple SoundCloud classics before they disbanded. In this video, I'll be going over the members' background, the music they made, and the many beefs that led to their brutal falling out. The Story of Splur Gang Splur Gang was a group consisting of Playboy Cardi, Uno the Activist, and Thousand Man Fani, active from around 2014 to 2016. Uno the Activist and Cardi, who many people think are real cousins due to how close they were to each other around that time, were family friends. They knew each other since they were little kids. Their families went to school together, and so did they. Since Uno and Cardi grew up together, naturally they both started making music together around the same time. Their old tweets of Cardi supporting Uno's music, Troy is Uno, Uno is right next to Cardi in Cardi's music video. So they were very close as young kids. Fawny came into the picture a bit later. Uno had a crib when he was 18 and Fawny was one of the people that just ended up being there. They said they became very close after they jumped Uno's roommate. Some fans refer to this time period of Cardi, Uno, and Fawny as the golden era, claiming it was when they made their best music. Keyword, some. The three of them together didn't have a large amount of songs where they were all featured, but they worked with each other heavily and were constantly seen with each other, especially Cardi and Uno. Newer fans often question the validity of this group, and yeah, they were a serious group, not just friends. They had a logo based off the Mercedes-Benz logo, and the Tech 678, which is the area code of Atlanta, the city they were from. And during the time period they were active, they dropped a plethora of notable tracks. Splur Gang. Yes, they literally have a song called Splur Gang, with close to a million views on YouTube. The song is about their life in LA, making money, and splurging on brands like Fendi. Sleeping with my nine. Cardi raps in an auto-tune voice about his lavish and dangerous lifestyle. Sleeping with his nine. Una raps about hitting the mall. V-Lone Thug. Released as part of ASAP Mob's Wavy Wednesday series and an ode to V-Lone, ASAP Bari's streetwear brand. Cardi eventually got V-Lone tatted on him, and at the time, it was cool. Cardi and Uno were both getting exposure from ASAP, who were wildly popular at the time. Even Uno was calling himself a V-Lone thug. What? The song is them repeating what? Fun fact, Cardi says what 135 times, Uno says it 3 times. The song was supposed to be a part of ASAP Mob's debut album Cozy Tapes, and the music video was dropped on ASAP Rocky's YouTube channel to help promote them. You and Me One of the last songs Uno and Cardi ever recorded, featuring production from Pierre Bourne, and even though it's one of their best and a fan grail, it was only released to the public after it leaked 2 years later in 2019. The members also shout each other out very often. Thousand Man Fani in his 2016 song, SCG. Playboy Cardi's 2014 track titled Bag, where he said, Splur Gang be my click, I'm CEO of that. Back when Uno was in high school, he dropped a song called I Doubt It. Cardi can be seen in the music video, and Uno even coincidentally uses Splur as an ad lib. Another interesting part about them is they used to use the same beats quite often. The beat on Uno, Sipping Tea, is the same as Cardi's Motivated, and the beat on Cardi's Check is the same as Uno's Shine, with an eye. But unfortunately, as you all know, the relationship would sour and the members would never actually reconcile. There was a lot of beef, but there were two major ones, Bonnie vs Yachty and Uno vs ASAP Mob such Buddy Dior. What does this have to do with Cardi? Well, he was friends with all of them, and this eventually turned into Fani and Uno vs Cardi, and be the end of Splur Gang. It's late 2015, and ASAP Rocky just met Cardi through Ian Connor, and introduced him to the ASAP Mob. At the time, Cardi was around several other rappers from the underground scene in Atlanta. For example, here's him with Slime Cito. But for the most part, in the beginning, they were all cool. Cardi and Uno even dropped Bilon Thug, and what? through AWGE, ASAP Worldwide Global Entertainment, aka Rocky's creative agency which Cardi was signed to at one point. Cardi, Uno, and ASAP Mob could even be seen together at ASAP pop-up shops, alongside Fani, D Savage, Ian Connor, and the rest of the mob. So around late 2015 to early 2016, Cardi began to align himself with ASAP Mob more and more, and he'd be with Uno and Fani less. This created some tension and a bit of a divide as Cardi wasn't always with them anymore. So it was already Uno and Fani on one side and Cardi on the other. Since then, people were speculating that he switched up to be with the mob, but they were still dropping music and things seemed to be on good terms internally, which is all that matters at the end of the day. Until one fateful day. Bloody Dior, who's a creative director slash model, shot Uno. Yes, shot him. And Fani immediately sided with Uno, rightfully so. Cardi was indifferent and still hung out with the ASAP mob, even calling Bloody Dior his big bro. What's even more unfortunate is the fact that Dior and Uno were close at one point. He even said he'd bet it all to show you how close they were. Bloody Dior would even drop a diss track on Uno, Free Smoke Part 3 which some fans pointed out sounded just like Uno. After the situation transpired, Cardi made it clear he was not going to sign with Uno. Uno made a bunch of tweets about Cardi switching up on him. This ain't no diss, but I would never sell my soul for the fame. 
I would never change on my family over woman. I would never friend my brother's enemy. I would never talk down on family. So guys, I don't f with them before they meet. All that devil worship feeding statues is out. He'd go on to say, they're selling their soul and getting f for fame. The secret is out. People look you in the eye and say, I can take your style because we're family. Then never see you again. If a person shot my brother, I would never call the shooter my big homie, especially when these guys babies out here. Y'all seeing things from one side. That shit dead as of today. People lie on the shine. Ain't that crazy. He'd go on to say, I'm not a V-Lone thug. Meaning, he doesn't mess with Cardi and the rest of ASAP Mob like he once did and even rapped on their song, V-Lone Thug. He then showed him and Cardi's DMs. Cardi says they love using his name for attention. He doesn't have to be cool with anyone and can come for anyone, to which they call him a snake. To continue the drama that was the real Housewives of Spur Gang, Thousand Band Fani had beef with Lil Yachty. Fani and Yachty, both being from Atlanta, were pretty close at one point and were even working on a collab tape. But they fell out over a girl who set Fani up to slime Sido, who stole his chain. Yachty posted the photo of his chain, which made Fani pretty mad. But Yachty took to Twitter to explain he didn't know it was Fani's chain and he would never do something like that, which is understandable, right? Not to Fani. It was too late for Fani to forgive him. After a show, Fani would shoot his water gun towards Yachty's car and call him afterwards to let Yachty know. Fani even had beef with Quality Control, Yachty's label. A year after the altercation between them, Fani had forgiven Yachty, but Yachty didn't know. So while trying to go up to Yachty and congratulate Yachty on his album's success, Fani got absolutely packed by Lil Yachty's security at South by Southwest, and Yachty effectively won the beef. A week after Fani got jumped, a fader video between Cardi and Yachty would be released. So naturally, Fani must have felt like Cardi didn't have his back, because he didn't. This, on top of the bloody Dior and Uno situation, seriously tainted their relationship. Fani would later make up with Ian Connor and Lil Yachty. Of course, Uno supported Fani and released the diss track on Yachty, Free Smoke Part 1. This track was in support of Fani after his beef with Yachty, letting Yachty know he wanted all the smoke. It was actually produced by Pierre Bourne. Free Smoke became a series, he dropped a part 2, which is just a diss, and who it's directed at is hard to say. And of course, Bloody Dior, after shooting Uno, would drop part 3. Since then, Uno and Fani have addressed the situation multiple times, and a lot of it is in their music. Sad Truth Freestyle On Sad Truth, Uno addresses his falling out with Cardi. He claims money was the difference between him and Cardi. They used to be brothers. Cardi ate off Uno, and an enemy of Cardi's was an enemy of Uno's, but Cardi chose on him. In Shine, with a Y this time, Uno sings about Cardi's betrayal saying better watch who you call your bro and why you betray me, I don't know. Later on in 2019, Uno would remix Cardi's song Pissy Pamper and reply to a comment saying I don't hate him, don't love him. Not picking sides with yourself is crazy, but by that time, the beef was over. Bonnie addressed the situation as well. He said he still loves Cardi, he just thinks he's a female dog, and can't forgive him over the internet for speaking ill of him behind his back. Much later on, in an interview in 2020, Uno did say, I got nothing against him, but I'm not gonna take back what I said. Everything happens for a reason. I know where we stand, so it's cool. More blessings to him. And when Whole Lotta Red dropped, Uno even took to Twitter and wrote, Congrats on the album, at Playboy Cardi. Love you. Final thoughts. Overall, Cardi wouldn't have reached the popularity he has today without Splur Gang, but he likely wouldn't have gone to where he is today without the help of ASAP Mob. Here's a good comment summarizing the situation. I messed with Uno and Fani, but in my opinion, they don't get that to blow up in the industry, you just need to do certain things, hang around certain people to go mainstream. Cardi did those things, and those certain people just happened to have beef with Uno and Fani. Which is true, to level up, you gotta work with new people, usually in a better position than you. So, does what I said right Cardi's wrongs though? Nah, not really. But Cardi has held his career in a higher regard, and this video probably wouldn't exist if he hadn't. Some fans have gone on to say they want a Splur Gang revival bad, more than 1629, and even more than Whole Lotta Red, before it came out. So will they have a reunion like many Splur Gang fans seem to want so bad? Hell no. Cardi has gone leaps and bounds ahead of Uno and Fani and left them in the dust, respectfully. And there's no way he's ever going to go back to them, with how rare he keeps his brand. Cardi's career kind of reminds me how people move up in the corporate ladder by job hopping every couple of years. First he was kicking it with Ethereal, then Awful Records, while also going hard with Uno and Fani. Then he went on to ASAP Mob, until he finally surpassed everyone in ASAP Mob slash AWGE and then went on to become one of the largest rap artists by himself, going number one on Billboard, with one of the most cultish fan bases we've ever seen. So as fans, we just gotta recognize these three will never make music again. And if you do, I guess we're all allowed to dream. Lastly, I just wanted to mention Cardi won this beef, obviously because he's bigger, but more importantly because he didn't speak on it, which gave him all the power in this situation. Uno was literally shot, but fans turned a blind eye to it because of how much Uno and Fadi dragged it, rightfully, but still let it get to them. Just a word of advice from someone who has no idea what they're talking about. Apparently, they're all on good terms now, but to end it, here's what Uno had to say. We were friends and could have been brothers, for real, but different paths led us to different ways, and on the possibility of a reunion, he said, I don't think it can happen, but I'm not close to anything either. That's it, I'm Rashad Fashir, and I make videos on music and other cool stuff. Join my Discord to speak with like-minded people, and have a nice day. Some can say I 
got changed on them because I thought they was on the same I was on, but they not.